Hi everyone, my name is Natalie Dunaway and I'm the Grants Coordinator with the Mississippi Library Commission. Today we are going to talk about Connected Learning. Connected Learning is a blended interest-driven learning framework um, that encourages learning across multiple settings and contexts. It, uh, in, it encourages learning across different platforms of technology uh, or social media. It, it's a production um, centered um, framework of learning and uh, what we'll see is that it's also very social in its nature. Um, if you have any questions about PowerPoint or connected learning, please feel free to reach out to me via my email, uh, which will be listed on uh, the final slide. So let's get started. So first, what we'll discuss, um, we'll start with, you know, what connected learning is. Um, then we'll move on to the principles of connected learning. There are six principles and we'll go over them in detail. We'll um, go over some examples of connected learning and then finally we'll talk about connected learning and incorporating it into your library programming and um, why ultimately that matters. So what is connected learning? I have three uh, definitions here that I um, chose. Um, if you Google connected learning, you'll find a range of definitions, but they have very similar um, or nearly identical um, ingredients to, um, to the definitions, but they, you, you might notice that they vary a little bit. I really like the third one, the third bullet from the National Writing Project. I feel like this is a really good um, representation of connected learning and its framework and its, you know, sort of, um, your purpose is that connected learning is when someone is pursuing a personal interest with the support of peers, mentors, and caring adults, and in ways that open up opportunities for them. So connected learning is interest-driven learning. It's self-directed, interest-driven, and the idea is that um, folks or young learners who are pursuing and knowledge and learning about something that they are naturally interested in or passionate about, they're able to retain that information better. And it's utilizing that knowledge that they acquire in pursuing their interests to, um, you know, use for an academic or um, possibly, you know, professional edge and creating their own opportunity from that. So um, to continue with this definition, it's fundamentally different. It's a fundamentally different mode of learning than education centered on fixed subjects, one to many instruction and standardized testing. So it is pretty fundamentally different than the sort of traditional learning context of the classroom. Um, connected learning is not a shrug to or a dismissal of our uh, traditional learning system, but what it is saying is that allowing young learners to pursue their, um, their personal interests and cr create opportunity from that um, is an excellent and supportive way um, to um, support, you know, learning outside of the traditional um, traditional classroom. Um, so let's see, let's keep going to what is connected learning. So ultimately it's interest driven. It's combining individual interests and academic pursuits. Um, it's the utilization of our highly networked digital world to reinforce learning opportunities through accessing open information and pursuing knowledge outside of a traditional school setting. So when we go over the principles of connected learning, this is another element we'll see, is that connected learning, um, like I mentioned, really encourages learning across multiple settings and multiple platforms, and that can include um, technology and social media. You know, today our world is so diverse and information is so much more accessible that connected learning really promotes using that sort of um, open access to information to pursue knowledge, to pursue um, your interests and use that um, to learn and create opportunities and, um, you know, forge a, forge a future from that. Um, also educational equity, social relationships, and engaged participation, really big elements and results of connected learning. Simply put, if um, you know, learners are encouraged outside of the traditional school setting to learn in other contexts, whether it's at home, community center, your local library, um, boys and girls club, you know, wherever it is, um, that makes educational attainment 
more equitable because you're able to learn in more contexts. You're not, you know, you're not restricted to really learning and only accessing information for the development of your education only at one setting. Being able to learn at multiple settings with supported mentors and being able to access information like at your local library, you naturally have more opportunities to learn in the end. And in the end, of course, this, um, you know, generates opportunity. Um, so let's see, let's go into the principles of connected learning. So there's six, um, interest powered, um, production centered, peer supported, shared purpose, academically oriented, and openly networked. So first, um, connected learning, like we've discussed, it's interest powered. When a topic is interesting or personally relevant to the learner, there's a greater desire to gain knowledge or hone skills related to that topic. Um, connected learning is also production center. Uh, connected learning promotes experimenting, uh, producing, designing, and hands-on participation to develop skills or gain knowledge. Connected learning um, is also peer supported. It's important to learn in a positive environment among your peers, among your friends, and that's what helps learning um, by enhancing the social element of it. Um, and this ultimately makes it more socially meaningful. Um, shared purpose, uh, learning uh, when you're sharing interests across communities, especially via web-based communities and um, applications. This allows for peers, learners, teachers, and mentors to share interests and contribute to a shared goal or purpose. Um, connected learning is academically oriented. Of course, we're pursuing our own um, interests or passions, but we want to be able to utilize this to forge, you know, uh, maybe academic opportunities. So learners utilize their interest-driven pursuits in combination with traditional learning environments and institutes. So again, this is um, not a shrug or a dismissal of the traditional learning context or you know the traditional classroom. Um, this is something um, that can really support ultimately um, a learner's um, academic pursuits. And lastly, openly network. Connected learning connects the traditional classroom to community resources, home and other learning contexts like online platforms to encourage learning in more than one setting. All right, so Natalie, we've had all this theory. This is great. This seems really great, but I mean, we need some actual examples to see what's, what do you mean by all this? So let's uh, take a look at some. So Charlie is a sophomore in high school and her favorite subject is literature. And she particularly enjoys poetry. With the permission of her English teacher, Charlie recruits a few friends and they form an after school poetry club. The club publishes uh, student work in the school newspaper and even creates its own Instagram page. When Charlie begins to apply to university or thinking about university, her club experience actually helps her get a scholarship for her university's English program. So this is, I think, a really good example of connected learning. You have Charlie. She's really, really interested in um, the subject of poetry. Um, she has a supportive mentor. You know, her English teacher has given her and her classmates permission to form a poetry club. Um, and they actually publish student work. Um, they create an Instagram page actually for their club. And how is this academic, academically oriented? Well, Charlie um, is able to use this experience to, um, you know, acquire a scholarship for an English program. And if you notice under, um, under my little story here, I've got a bullet with some letters I P P S O N A O M P C, and this is just the six. These are um, five of the six um, principles of connected learning. I thought that this scenario hit. So I P interest powered. You know, it's powered by her interest in poetry. P S peer supported. She's pursuing this interest along with her peers and in a supportive environment um, with the permission of her English teacher. O N. This is an openly networked experience. They create an Instagram page, assuming that they follow other poetry pages and they garner followers. Um, let's see. A O academically oriented. It benefits her um, by helping her get a scholarship for university. And a PC uh, production center. They're actually 
publishing student work. They're um, publishing on their Instagram page. So there is a level of production. Um, um, there is an outcome oriented with this. So let's look at another one. Justin is a high schooler who enjoys clothes and design. He is also a member of his local library's uh, teen advisory board, the advisory board or TAB. I'm sure y'all are familiar with that. <laughs> the TAB and Youth Services Librarian decide that a great community program will be to host a local Comic Con for uh, teens in the community. In addition to creating his own costume, uh, he volunteers to assist anyone interested in attending um, with making their costume. And he does this after school and he utilizes the library's uh, sewing kits. He helps a handful of friends create their costumes for Comic-Con and begins to practice at clothing design regularly. The skills he develops over the years in high school contribute to him finding internships and college programs for arts and design. So this is a really good example of someone pursuing something they're interested in, in um, you know, a non-traditional learning setting. They're at their local library. Um, and I've got my little, um, um, the principles down at the bottom, the IP, it's interest powered, of course, um, AO academically oriented. So Justin is, um, you know, using this experience to um, network and connect by finding internships and university programs. NPS peer supported. This is happening in a really positive, really, really socially positive environment, you know, uh, with his tab and with uh, presumably a really supportive uh, youth services librarian. So a real life example that I didn't just make up is um, Chance the Rapper. So um, this is Chance the Rapper here on the right. Uh, he's really famous. It looks like from the background he's attending the iHeart uh, Radio Awards. Um, Chance the Rapper actually got his start at uh, what's known as Chicago's U Media. And Chicago's U Media is a program founded in the Chicago Public Library System and it operates teen learning spaces across the library branches. I mean, um, if you Google Chicago U Media, I mean, it's incredibly impressive what they do and how the branches work together and the services and um, the tools they offer for teens to use and really pursue knowledge and interest in a connected learning uh, context. But of course, um, some of these you see here that are listed, I think you'll got, you guys will look at and you'll say, oh, we have some of that stuff too. So of course, you know, they have everything from books, video games, vinyl cutters, little bits coding kits. I know y'all know what those are. Um, so we have a few here at MLC. 3D printers, lily pads, recording studio. One library actually had a recording studio and that's how Chance Rapper got his start by um, utilizing the library's recording studio and uh, career readiness programs. And these are just a few things that um, the U Media program um, offers. And another really good um, positive thing about U Media is that it links learners, youth that come in and wanna utilize um, the space and the programs and all the wonderful um, tech and tools they have is uh, they link learners to mentors. Um, and actually, if you Google Chicago U Media and Chicago Public Library, and if you do a lot of digging on connected learning, you'll probably see this term called HOMA going. It's, uh, it came from um, the U Media project. It was um, coined there. It's hanging out, messing around, and geeking out. So let's recap really quick before we talk about connected learning in your library. So connected learning, again, it's interest driven. It's um, learning across multiple contexts and institutes and environments. It's um, supported learning, it peer supported and aimed at academic development. And ultimately this is to help foster opportunity. So connected learning in your library. So first and foremost, the public library is an excellent setting for CL. The sheer nature of what the public library is like at its foundation um, is what makes it so ideal. Libraries are dedicated to free information access. And of course, patrons are able to pursue that information at a self-directed pace. Um, and I'm willing to bet that a lot of CL is actually already occurring um, at your library. So <laughs> that's really awesome. Um, youth can attend uh, programming, for example. Um, they can utilize your collections. Um, there's maker spaces. 
if you work in conjunction with your schools or other um, partner organizations, you can, and I'm sure you already do, provide programming um, that maybe supports, um, you know, the what they have in terms of the academics at the local public school, for example. Um, there's just general patron support that y'all provide. Connected learning is, I mean, the public library is an ideal place for connected learning just by what y'all already offer. So I really like this quote. I got it from Connected Libraries, uh, the website at the bottom. Um, you see my little source note there. It says, libraries have long supported voluntary interest-driven learning in contrast to schools, particularly under-resourced public schools, which may not provide many opportunities for youth to explore their personal interests. Libraries can tailor their programs to meet the diverse needs and wants of young people in their communities. So again, this is just to reinforce that your library is an ideal place to create a connected learning and a learning environment. Um, if you're not sure maybe how to get started, I really um, advise you to go to this source down at the bottom of my PowerPoint. The website is the Connected Lib and there's a URL. And they actually have um, examples of what libraries across the country are doing um, in terms of integrating, you know, connected learning into their programming. Uh, but a few ways that, um, you know, you can have a positive connected learning environment um, are multi-week programs. You know, John may not be able to go to the uh, uh, or uh, be able to afford to go to the expensive coding camp that his high school offers in the summer, but maybe the library can offer, you know, a coding camp that lasts a month. If you're not able to do that, if you have a really small library staff or you don't have the resources, one off programs are great too. Um, there's nothing wrong with, there's absolutely nothing wrong with just having, you know, a once every now and then, you know, STEM, STEAM, uh, or coding workshop for your local teams. Um, having team volunteers is great. If you have um, a tab or if you know you have teens that are interested in library services, you know, having them come and volunteer at the library and also advise you on, um, you know, what teens and what the youths are interested in these days is an excellent way to sort of tap into what might be interesting and popular and um, help you in making that connected learning environment. Real skills programming, I think that's really awesome. Like programming that actually teaches um, learners real, you know, life skills. Um, open hangout hours, if you have um, a learning lab or a makerspace lab or, you know, just some sort of space where, um, where it's a teen hangout space where they can play instruments or, um, you know, paint or draw or, you know, whatever, it may be good just to have sort of some open hours that's where it's just kind of, um, you know, between the hours of 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. you can just come in and all this stuff will be out, you know, our maker spaces will be out, our instruments will be out, you know, whatever. And, you know, teens can just come in and kind of home ago, they can just kind of hang out, uh, mess around and uh, geek out. And also, um, if it works for you, I mean, not all programming has to happen at the library. You can take it to the institution. So if you want to provide that supportive um, uh, learning, um, environment outside of the traditional context. Maybe you can partner with another community center and y'all can work together to build a connected learning um, experience or space. So connected learning in your library. So why does all this matter? I remember being an undergraduate anthropology class and our final project was to give presentations about different theories across the field of anthropology. And anyways, I finished my presentation and it went relatively well. And my professor asked, so why does this matter, Natalie? Why, why does this matter? And of course I knew why it mattered, like in my brain, but I realized when she posed that question, it's really important to sort of fully illustrate why your argument, position, theory, you know, whatever, why it actually matters. Um, and to actually articulate that. <laughs> Not to just say, oh, it's important, so it matters. Um, so from then on out, since I was about 19, I'm 30 now, I always try to include a why does it matter slide. So the framework of connected learning, it normalizes learning outside of the traditional classroom and also outside of uh, 
you know, traditional assignments that we get from um, our traditional um, education context. The CL framework also places great importance on networking and learning in tandem with our rapidly diversifying and changing world. It promotes civic awareness and learning it uh, and by showing all the different avenues or ways in which to acquire information and knowledge, it also pr promotes lifelong learning skills. And ultimately, CL framework, the CL framework uh, levels the playing field um, in regards to education equity. You know, like I said, John may not be able to afford that high school summer coding camp, but John can go to his local community center or library programs and learn coding skills there. And when we make learning more equitable and accessible outside of just the traditional context, and we highlight the many different ways uh, people can learn effectively when they're pursuing their own interests, um, more folks are able to learn and forge a path of opportunity for themselves. So that's why it matters. Um, okay. And lastly, here are my sources. I really recommend y'all check out some of these websites. Um, and I've got some articles over to the right. Uh, Connect to Connected Learning by American Libraries Magazine. It's a great article. Connected Libraries, Surveying the Current Landscape and Charting Path to the Future on uh, the website Connected Lib is really good. And then I've got two that are actually both named What is Connected Learning? One's on the YALSA website and the other one is by the National Writing Project. For websites, I just say dive right in, go straight to the Connected Learning Alliance. That's everything you need to know. It's got examples, it's got anecdotes, it's got resources, it's got everything. Education Innovator is a really good example, is a really good website to look also for uh, Connected Learning examples. Um, the Chicago Learning Exchange and the Chicago Public Library are great resources um, to look at um, U Media and what all sh uh, the Chicago Public Library System is doing to um, create a positive connected learning um, experience and environment for uh, youths in the city. And lastly, the American Library Association. If you just go to their website and you type in connected learning, you'll get um, a bunch of resources and articles. So I definitely recommend that you all check that out. All right, and lastly, um, again, my name is Sally Dunaway. I'm the grants coordinator here at the Library Commission. Um, you have my email here. It's ndunaway at mlc.lib.ms.us. If you have any questions about um, the website or connected learning, um, don't uh, hesitate to reach out to me. Let me know, and uh, we can definitely chat about it. And thank you all so much.